Well, hello and welcome. Um, today's topic is inspiring and enabling the community. And as Ruth showed us yesterday, the Maudit community is growing by leaps and bounds. But to reach the true potential, the true vision that was presented yesterday, we need to enable and inspire those who have started contributing to the community and, and maybe sputtered out. So today's panel discussion is an open opportunity for us to discuss ideas to do just that, to take those who have contributed and inspire them and remove friction or frustration and uh, enable them to, to continue contributing in a really good experience. My name is Steve Robinson. I'll be moderating this panel and I'm gonna throw a few questions at our lovely panelists today, but um, I'd really appreciate it if you could throw your questions and ideas into the Q&A as well. So if you have a question for our panelists about the uh, experience of contributors, if you have an idea that you'd like to pose, please put it there. I also want to put a little some, some, some guardrails on today's conversation just a little bit. We are not talking about attracting new contributors to the project. We are talking about taking those who have contributed either through a team or through code and making their experience better, uh, enabling and inspiring them to come back and do more. And with that, um, I'm going to invite our panelists to the stage here and uh, We'll kick things off. Okay. All right, before we dive into the panel discussion, uh, Deborah has a report for us. So Deborah, I'm gonna hand the reins off to you. Hey everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. That's my first time speaking in public, so please don't mind if I get a little confused. Um, no, I was I was asked to uh, tell you folks a little bit about uh, how it was my experience uh, starting contributing. So um, I don't exactly recall like how I started. I think I asked the question in the forums and then ended up in in the Slack channels. Uh, but I do remember that. When I thought about contributing, I, I thought like, oh, but I, I don't have anything to add because I had only just started coding. And uh, I was like, okay, so I, I, I can't contribute uh, with anything. And then uh, people started telling me that, uh, yes, any skill uh, can be used, can be useful. Just tell us what you can do and we'll see like how you can help. And so uh, I, as a journalist, the first thing that I did was an interview and then a blog post uh, about uh, Favor Calvin. And um, so that's how I started. And the more I, I wanted to contribute, the, the, the different the, the tasks that we could find that maybe my skills could be um, useful with. And uh, I, I felt like it was a tiny thing that I was doing, but the reaction I got like with everyone that I talked was like, nothing is tiny. So that's like a, a, a value that people give you. And it feels... From my experience in the corporate world, it feels um, it feels very different because not only do you actually feel useful, uh, you you see that people recognize uh, what you did, and you know, um, and it, I I always feel like people are um, people are always ready to help you. So that's also different from my previous uh, experience in in the corporate world. World, it's. Every time, every time you want to do something and you don't know how, uh, you can ask for help and somebody there will 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 give you a hand. Um, yeah, so I've been with the community for about I think eight months now. I am with the marketing team, and uh, it's been awesome this far. And um, I want to keep contributing. I don't know if um, there's anything else I I can add. I'm trying to be good. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Deborah. With that, let's get some other folks out here and we can kick off the panel discussion. 
So I, I think let's start at the beginning here. If, uh, if an outsider comes in and starts contributing, how easy is it them for, to, for them to understand the, the options for cont contribution or to navigate their way around the community and understand where they, how, how best to have an impact? And what can we do to improve that process? Hmm. Before I answer that, um, I'm, I'm thinking about what, what uh, Debo just said. Um, I, I, it, I'm very happy that, that the process went so smoothly for you. And I, I think that's not the same for everybody. That's why we are here. We definitely want to find those places where we can improve. And, um, but first of all, I'm very happy to have you on board, Deborah. Uh, we, we did meet at the Mordic Sprint in Budapest, and I, I can testify that you are a great, great enhancement of, of the community and, and very enthusiastic about Mordic, and I love that. So yeah, that, that's great. And also thanks for telling us the story. I know you were nervous about that. Um, now, OK, I forgot the question, Steve. <laughs> Sorry. That's OK. One of the one of the barriers that 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 I think we've we've recognized as a community is is understanding the structure of the modic community itself between yeah. teams and and contributing on the code on the code side as well. Um, where do you see the biggest challenges there and and where, where, where does this group see some opportunities? And again, for the audience members out there, we're looking awfully quiet in chat and Q&A and that's expected at this point, but we do expect you to, to contribute as well. So please chime in with your own ideas and answers. Yeah, good starting point for contribution. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, that's absolutely right. I think understanding an open source project from the outside is, is a challenge. The good thing is that we are not as huge as, as a WordPress is or, or Drupal is, et cetera. Um, the next thing is that our structures are still evolving. And the, the other thing is to make that transparent to the outside. And what we have done so far is pretty good. We, we do proper documentation of things and, and um, try our best to clarify processes and all the document and all. Um, the, the missing link maybe is the, the good starting point. We have so many, so many efforts now where we explain things or, and invite people to touch base here, to get in contact there, uh, that, that people again get confused. And, and so uh, having a clear onboarding journey to me is the one challenge that we should focus on. Yeah, I think also um, just recently we've been including in the newsletter, like, 10 tasks from across the community that we need someone to help us with. Things like creating a header image for our Facebook group or writing a blog article about an upcoming news, things like that. I think that's also a way of giving people an insight into the kind of things that they could help us with. Um, making obviously sure that those issues are really well documented of how to work on it and how to get started and who to message and that kind of thing. But that might also be a way of encouraging people to help them find direction as to where their skills are and what things they, they actually want to work on. You, you, you mentioned, uh, you know, individual help and, and uh, um, how, how does that personal assistance play into this, uh, you know, that one-to-one -one being able to talk to somebody? I, I would like to make just one more comment to the previous previous thing and then it's a great segue to your question uh i think that people don't expect that it's it's so easy to contribute to an open source project they think they're they're not good enough uh to to contribute and uh they're very surprised that we are so welcoming i mean you can see it in the forums every day that people are like uh you know why is this not ready and then maybe you can do it okay done and this is very 
surprising for, for many, many uh, future contributors. And what you ask, how important is this personal connection to have like a mentor or someone who brings you into the, the community? I think it's super important because people need to be invited to the party in order to feel good about participating. Yeah, I, I would agree. And I specifically would agree to the, the uh, no, but I also would agree to the first part of your comment. And um, going back to the idea of a, uh, a journey, pretty much like a, a sales funnel or, or marketing journey, user journey, um, what Ruth just said is really, um, at least when we're looking at our scope today, is the very beginning. So, so we envision a person who is out there who is willing to get active, to, to move on from, from a passive, passive con consumer of open source to somebody who is giving back. And uh, the first issue is, is feeling empowered to do that or, or feeling mm -hmm. the, the right person and, and the option to do that and understanding what it might mean. And giving examples is certainly a direct and easy uh, way to do that. And, and um, so I think that is a perfect beginning of our journey uh, of, of moving from pot potentially active to uh, ongoingly active. Um, so that, that's the first thing that's basically the call to action. And then I, I feel it's very important if, if that person shows up to take her or him by the hand, find the right spot. Maybe this first chunk that they wrote about, uh, mm -hmm. read about is, is already the, the best thing, but even then uh, they should have some direct feedback, some direct person uh, to, to work with, to feel like like entering a family as opposed to uh, sending things into a, mm -hmm. a black hole and nothing comes back. Yeah. Uh, on that sense, I would add that uh, having one person, like one first contact, I think it gives you a sense of, okay, so I made one friend, uh, friend, yeah. and then this friend can introduce me to their friends, you know? So you have like a, a, a contact point uh, that you can feel like, because, okay, you can ask things on a channel, for instance, uh, on Slack, but sometimes people are shy or people, I feel that all the time, like, oh, is this a dumb question? And then the bot comes and tells me there's no dumb questions. And really there isn't, there aren't. Uh, but uh, the thing is that I, when you, you, you can talk to a, an actual person, someone that you expect to answer you, and then... I think the second part of that is that the person does answer you and they do try to help you. And then you feel this uh, sense of welcoming that um, Robin is talking about on the chat. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, so I, I, I am doing this right. And, you know, I, I want to keep doing that. I, you know, I, I have what I, what I need to do and take another step and then keep on going. Excellent. I think that's really good, a really good point, but also, it's difficult to scale that unless you have lots more people wanting to be mentors. So I think like that needs to run in parallel with also having some resources where people can find everything that they need to know about how to get started contributing. A bit like what you have, like an employee's handbook at uh, GitLab. They have like everything to do with the organization in one place, you know? So I feel like both of those things need to happen in parallel, you know, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, well, hmm. I think this, this first personal contact that does not have to be an ongoing thing. It cannot. Um, mm -hmm. But when you, we think back, I mean, we've all been through those stages where, where you get in touch or you consider getting in touch with something and don't really know to start where it's up and where it's down and all that. Mm -hmm. And you feel a lot of insecurity. And that's a big inhibitor. And... Uh, to take away that in, in the insecurity, a personal one-on-one -on -one is really the best thing. It also helps mm -hmm. you to find the, 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 the shortcut, uh, the direct entry into what is best for you and maybe what's the next step. And then you can go back and read about things, etc. So yeah, the combination mm -hmm. is key. 
do you think that that experience and that mentorship looks the same for the code side as it does for the team side or the other areas of contribution within the Mauda community? And how, how should that differ? Mm. Yeah, good question. I do think it's still helpful to have a mentor however you're contributing. Like some people will just throw a contribution over the fence and they don't need any help to get to that point. Um, but I think there's a lot of, there's a silent majority of people who would like to contribute, but they just don't, a bit like you were saying, Deborah, like just don't quite know or they don't feel like they're good enough or they don't, they don't know how their skills can help them or which tasks to get started on or whatever. So I think, yeah, for the for those people, even in coding, it's helpful if someone's like, I'm a developer, I know a bit of Symfony, I'm a bit new to Mautic, but I can help with testing PRs, but I just need someone to help get started. That's really important too. So I think that answers the question, but now I can't <laughs> remember what the question was. So <laughs> I think that all, all of the teams have to have, and this is what we have already in the Slack channel, the yeah. how to start to contribute type of small things, which gets you hooked, uh, and uh, and uh, it's the entry ticket for you. Uh, and if you accomplish that small task, then you're ready. You know, a little bit like in the mafia that they let you to do one thing before you can uh, belong to the family. It's a little bit like that. So you can actually do your first thing, and then you feel comfortable. Everybody feels comfortable, and then you're ready to do the next thing um, as well. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder whether that is necessarily the, the, the route for a developer, because I do see people who don't care, don't know whatever about the product team, for instance, but still mm. they create PRs. Mm. Um, maybe they don't do testing or reviews and they could do more if they would be helped. But, but uh, as a developer, it's much more a straightforward process to do code contribution just the next steps is is where it might take some some guidance so maybe it's the other way around there uh so when we discover people on github or wherever who do valuable mm -hmm. contribution somebody might get in touch with that person mm -hmm. and 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 just and then maybe congratulate and thank, thanks them but, but also discuss potential next steps Ruth had mentioned a question of scale on this uh, this mentorship mm -hmm. idea, and Robin presented an idea in chat. I'm just going to pop it up on stage here. Uh, maybe I'm going to yeah. pop it up on stage. Um, yeah, that should be showing now. Yeah. Okay, great. Scale, <laughs> scale could come from paying it back. When you are brought in by someone, you are strongly encouraged to uh, fulfill the same role for the next person who wants to get involved. So mm -hmm. the idea being that there's a pay it forward sort of system. I thought that was worthy of of, of mentioning. Yeah. If anyone wants to wants to bounce off of that, feel free. Yeah, it's the same as like you know, see one, do one, teach one, isn't it? As well, like mm -hmm. you, you're onboarded by someone. Maybe you support the next person being onboarded, and then you onboard someone else. Um, yeah, I think that's a great idea. Yeah, maybe not necessarily short term because even after three months you may not have the full overview to to help mm. somebody who may have questions from completely different areas, different areas that you have seen before. But mm. I, I think this this notion of uh, yeah, paying it back sounds a little bit too financial mm. to me, but, but of, yeah, you should do the same that you liked when you came in. Uh, that's definitely a good thing. Not everybody is, is good at that. It's also, also comes in it. Yeah, but right now it's not like we have a hundred uh, volunteers per per month. Not and, yet. Uh, yeah, that's next month. <laughs> and um, that's that's like like a, an issue we should keep an eye on. But I would really start with with find the perfect. Uh, assistance to those volunteers, and then if we come into scaling problems, then hooray! I, I was gonna add that I, for me at least, uh, it kind of feels natural to like do it uh, to the next person because uh, I think when you feel welcome, 
you want everybody else to feel welcomed. So I think mm -hmm. like uh, if someone comes and asks you, and of course, I, I, if I understand correctly, when we talk about scale, we're talking about if I am helping five people at the same time with the amount of time that I have to contribute, I am basically just like, you know, helping people. But as a first step or as like, at least uh, as we mentioned at the beginning, connecting them to the right person, because X is totally right. Like, there's a bunch of stuff that I don't know yet. You know, mm. and I'm like, uh, maybe talk to Ruth, maybe asking this channel or that channel, because I mean, I'm not I don't know what person to ask, but I know that maybe that channel has some relation. And if not, mm. someone on that channel is going to say, hey, this is not the channel. Try this this one. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, maybe there is a, a bit of bouncing around that mm. might be a little frustrating or unencouraging at the beginning. But at least you see someone is trying, you know, and I think mm. that. Uh, even if it takes longer, even if it's a bit like not as expected, it's better than being ignored. Because I, I think mm -hmm. the feeling of being ignored, uh, because someone mentioned like the onboarding of a company when you get hired for a company. For, I don't know if this is a Brazilian thing or maybe just my experience, but um, OK, you, you go to that meeting. They give you a bunch of, of leaflets and stuff like that. And after that, you never see those people anymore. You know, you just it's just mm -hmm. you and your team. And maybe if you're lucky enough, your boss is going to care about you. And the experience I've had with the multi community is not that. It's like you see that from the beginning, someone cares about mm -hmm. you. Someone is trying to do something. So I think this it, it, it's subjective, but I think this this matters mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah, maybe, I care. think there was one. Sorry, I think there was one important term here. And there was maybe it's not as expected. I think the important thing is to get expectations right. Mm. If, if that person, that, that sort of godfather, it, the role is just to welcome you and to, to give you a bridge and not to answer all the questions. And we make that clear mm. from the beginning. Um, then it's much easier for even somebody who's relatively yeah. new to the community to give that personal attendance and and um say okay um, I, i'm gonna collect your questions and then uh, get back to you really soon because i know how to uh, who to ask mm -hmm. the expectations yeah. not that that person can answer all the questions but but that person is there for you and that's the point everyone can be a friend ultimately right everybody yeah. can be a friend to someone and if you've got that legacy behind you of the person who onboarded you and the person who onboarded them You've at least got a chain, not a chain of command, but you know, you've at least got a chain of people behind chain you of trust. <laughs> that you can ask. So I think it is really important that we do have that kind of culture of people caring about each other and being willing to to be a friend and, and welcome people and say, oh, I don't know, but I'm sure I can help you find the right people. You know, that's like you say, more helpful than just being completely ignored or just saying i'll help you but i'm really busy right now i'll get back to you in half an hour or you know. i That's think that... uh, can i add one more thing that i think that many contributors who just come in contribute one and then maybe they leave they under underestimate the power of this network uh mm -hmm. because amazing people are in slack and all of them have some specialties and after a while, if you network enough on Slack, you know, helping here out a little bit, there a little bit, you can actually solve all your problems <laughs> regarding Mautic in any, it could be scalability or it's email delivery or it's, you know, installing on Windows, there is a person for that. So networking really makes sense. And if you start contributing, you will be pulled into this network and you can benefit from it enormously. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I'd like to take a take a moment here to 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 shift the conversation a little bit and and definitely I think we're going to get some more uh, contributions from the um, uh, from the audience here because we're about to ask people to complain and and nobody has a problem with that so um, I think the, the, I'd like to shift the conversation to to identifying those points of friction right where are the hmm. points of friction where are the points of frustration for contributors that hold them back from coming back for a second contribution or a second time. Um, I'll go to the panelists and please, if you have, a, if you have, if you want to call out your biggest frustration in contributing to the Mata community, this is your, this is your, this is your time on the uh, Q and A. 
I think from the development perspective, so I'm speaking from coders, um, historically, we've really struggled to get through new contributions in a timely way. So if somebody makes a contribution with the code to make sure that it's not going to break things, it has to pass certain tests, we have to review it and, and test it and stuff. And sometimes that has taken a really long time. So people have been discouraged from making another contribution because that one hasn't been recognized, it hasn't been dealt with, and it hasn't actually made it into MORTIC. So that's one I definitely see from the coding perspective. Um, and we're working on that. We do need more testers to help with that, though. We can only go as fast as we have people to help test. So. Uh, I have no idea about that, but, but I, th I do think this is a big problem. And would it be feasible to at least, I mean, as long as we have this bottleneck and this, this long delays, at least give people feedback that we are aware of it, that we apologize, that we uh, encourage them to do some testing themselves, whatever, but, but again, not be mm. this black hole. We do that. We do oh, that. Great. But still, okay. if you're sitting and waiting three months mm. and the four months for your yeah. contribution to be merged, then it can be a bit disheartening. So we don't uh, yeah. just leave them dead anymore. We do always, it's usually me personally or, or John or someone says thank you and gives them some feedback on the PR or gives them some tips if they need to make changes. But yeah, just like recognizing people and getting their contributions out into the world. So if it's a blog post, like having it out on the blog within a month or two, you know, so that it's not like waiting for ages and ages. I think that's quite important. And I think we we should communicate that, that the waiting lines are shorter. John works on this extremely hard. Mm. Uh, also by introducing the Friday uh, open source days helped, I think, also on the sprint. Mm. We did a lot of work. And maybe we, we can get back some some coders or some contributors who said, I'm just not going to do my PR. I mean, I know, I know there are... Um, companies there who have their own little plugin which just fixes everything which never got uh, merged and uh, and we need to win them back as well and keep contributing so maybe this is something which we can get better in communicating hey come back things have changed and we are actually better in um, merging things Nick asks over in in q and a there's a delicate balance between making it easy for people to contribute um, and decreasing the stability of the of the of the the software overall versus making it harder for someone to contribute more automated tests more 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 things in, in in your in your way from getting that pr through but increasing the stability of the platform um obviously that's a very delicate balance but w where do you where do you see uh uh where do you see people being able to um uh uh, uh how do you see that balance balance being managed? I guess would be the best way to ask. Yeah, I'm just reading the question. So it's sort of a yeah. two part question. That's, so. why I was, that's why I didn't put it up on stage right away. <laughs> so yeah. I was trying to how to put the two parts. <laughs> Thank you, Ruth. Mm, how do you think the... It's a challenge. It is a challenge when we don't have so many contributors helping with it um, and we have to balance, do we get bugs fixes out to users promptly or do we delay those bug fixes getting out to users uh, in order to make sure that we're testing things much more thoroughly? I think that's more a thing for the product team to discuss rather than a friction point with the contributor experience per se, like how we do that and what the, what the priority is um, but I think even if things are being delayed, a bit like you were saying, I can't remember, I think it was Eki, like we should at least keep people involved and they'll let them know what the delay is. So, so increased communication. Mm. Now, I was going to touch on that point. Uh, Eki was talking before about expectations. Um, and I think maybe uh, that's it. Like um, you, you will... Maybe even when we do, because I, I saw some people saying, oh, I didn't get the feedback, you know, I, I didn't hear back from no one. Um, but even if you do hear back, you expect to to see, like, see in practice what you've done, mm -hmm. you know, you, you see it out there. 
And I think that maybe working within those expectations, maybe like we could try and recognize this internally or something, you know, like we have this and this person is now a part of the community. So, and um, in that same sense, I think sp speaking like someone who's learning to code, but can't do a whole lot yet. Um, I remember I came up to one of you folks and said like, oh, I wanted to do some contributing on the code side, but I don't code. So, and then one of you said, test a PR. You can do that even if you don't code. So I'm not sure like how well are we maybe like leading people towards other activities that might not be as fun or as like on point to what they want to do, but they will feel this expectation of seeing something like going by faster, if that made any sense. Um, I think coming back to communication here, uh, Robin posted a comment that it's not just limited to code. Uh, he said, I, I was motivated and did some work and sent it back for feedback and heard nothing. It's understandable given everyone's workload, but it did and has stalled contribution. Um, so uh, if anyone has any, any points to add on that, it's not just PRs that might sit out there and not get responded to right away, but it sounds like there's other points of contribution as well. Yeah, I guess we're getting back to the original idea of the yeah, contributor's journey mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, code contribution out of the picture here. Um, of course, that has to be a non-frustrating journey. And uh, in, in Rob's case, I was personally involved because I um, had, had a conversation and I tried to hook him up with his, his team of choice. And then for some reason that uh, got stuck and, and um, that's something that must not happen ever. In my mind and and we are in a little bit of a chicken and egg problem in some teams because uh, the teams are so small that they cannot even onboard new people properly that is of course awful um and no excuse so sorry rob i i know that happened i hope we can win you back growing pains <laughs> Is the, the phrase. Can I, can I, uh, this, no, I just wanted to say that this panel starts to starts to be roasting us a little bit. So go, go ahead, Deborah. <laughs> Please no, keep I'll, coming. I'll, I was gonna. I I'm not familiar with Robin's case, but I was gonna bring the other side of it, uh, which is like uh, when there's a bunch of notifications of unread messages on my Slack on my Motex Slack. I kind of freak out and I'm like, oh my God, I'm lagging behind and I'm leaving people hanging and they need me and I'm not there for them. And so like on the other side, there's also someone who's, I believe, uh, is, is trying to be there. And uh, sometimes uh, th the time is just not enough and then there are other tasks and trying to balance as well, like between the, the tasks that are waiting on me and the people that are waiting on me. I think this is very hard to balance and it is frustrating like Aki said it is frustrating for mm. uh, I mean we are here trying to you know to tell what it feels like how great it is to contribute and uh, saying you contribute more contribute more times and at the same time it's like oh we dropped the ball on that one so it has it's frustrating on our end as well you know excellent point and I think we all feel the same pain um, and First of all, that's okay. Um, secondly, I think there are things where delay is unacceptable. Um, and that is, well, let's say preparing the Modi conference, <laughs> <laughs> um, at least the last meters, um, or helping new contributors because that is there's nothing worse than that. I mean, forget about the next newsletter, forget about this design refresh or quality assurance, whatever. That can all wait. But, but losing a new comp contributor is mm. inexcusable. So if we 
could have that awareness and maybe even even some sort of system that helps us to uh, distinguish those those uh, real important really important tasks that would be helpful but other than that i can just tell you that i have that every day i feel bad about things because i, I have good ideas i make promises maybe some some bad ideas too and um mm -hmm. i hardly i feel it feels to me like i like i hardly ever get things done except when we are in a sprint yeah Yet from the outside, Iggy, it looks like you get a lot done. So, <laughs> no, in reality, it's only really Ruth and Joey who are machines. Everybody else is like me. <laughs> <laughs> well, let, let's let's pivot the conversation a little bit to uh, a, a little bit more of a positive positive area. Um, uh, recognition, thank you, uh, mm -hmm. rewards. How can we how can we recognize the contributors that are contributing, especially on that first or second contribution? Yeah, it's a good question. Like, I, f I feel like we could do better with this. Um, we do do the monthly shout out in Slack, which is highlighting the top contributors, but that's not necessarily going to highlight everyone. Um, when we're doing uh, releases now, we do actually list out people who've made that first contribution. So every release, you'll see a list of people where it's their first contribution. Um, some other things were like when we had our leadership team sprint, we did actually allocate some funds to use to allow the community to um, suggest people, for example, who they think should be recognized. And we can just have like a quarterly thank you um, for people who've done something. So it might be that someone's really helped you out in the forum with an issue you were really stuck with. You could nominate them for, for an award. We haven't actually created the program yet, but we have got some funds in uh, earmarked. But it can even just be as simple as like someone makes their first contribution and we automatically send them a little link to say, if you want to give us your address, we'll send you out some swag and just send them like a thank you postcard and some stickers. You know, and if they level up to a certain level, we could then send them a mug or something else, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I did a tiny merge request for GitLab because there was a typo in the documentation that made me twitch and I went through the rather rigorous process to fix it. And I got a mug, which I now use like all the time because it's a really cool mug. You know, it does make you feel good about making that contribution and want you to come back. So, yeah, I think it's something that would be good to to look into. OK, we need mugs. <laughs> That's the solution. We need mugs. <laughs> Anything else from the group as far as how we can better recognize our, our contributors? I, I was thinking about uh, the, the, the small things like, um, yeah, the, the, I like the, the mug idea. Um, uh, but I think like in, a, in this day and age, having some public way of recognizing people is also a good way. And if like, uh, if we can do it in a, in, a, in a proper way, maybe we can just at least like do the, the like a roof style shout out for the new contributors in the in the team channel perhaps mm -hmm. uh and just something like publicizing something that was done like by this this individual into the group so the group know there's someone here and i think that might have like a ripple effect like oh yeah it's been a while since i done this sort of thing or since i contributed to this area or in this activity and you know, and like, oh, I want to be recognized as well. And like, maybe if, if in your personal life, things are not, you're not getting the value that you feel you deserve. And then you're, you're reminded that, hey, there is a community here that is willing to yeah. give you the value that, that you deserve. So maybe like the, the small things and um, giving that, that we are so like horizontal in, in this sense, I, I suppose it's a, um, everybody kind of thing it's not just like oh the leader or the person who did the final push of a button in the pr or stuff like that but like if you as a colleague i always go back to the corporate example sorry but like if you're a colleague and you see that your another contributor did, did something nice it's also great that we can recognize it and this goes not just for the first contribution even though that's the topic but it's it's a way of getting people going and showing them that it still matters. You know, if it's the first or the tenth, it still matters, and we are still here appreciating the things that you do. 
Yeah, I think it, it, it feels like a small thing and it's certainly not the top uh, problem solver for us, but, but it's also not a big deal. If we can, um, we can really create some sort of process to, to identify people that we want to recognize, then we can at the same time send them a, a mug and, and mention them in the newsletter and maybe have the same list uh, with the next Mordic release or whatever. So keep it simple, uh, but let's, I mean, it's, it's good that we already do things. If we could add to non those to non-coders, even better. So yeah, let's do it. And that kind of, that's a, that, that kind of keys in on uh, Robin's post in the, in the, in the uh, chat here about, um, I'll throw it up on stage, um, contributions in the forums as well. So it's not just, it's just not just PRs, uh, right? So there's there's other there are other contributions as well, and making sure that we recognize those. And if anybody wants to add on anything on that that front, please do. Or not. <laughs> well, I think I think it's a good idea. I mean, uh, there's already a lot of uh, you can have different kind of badges in the forums if you have popular. Uh, popular um, links, then you you can have that type of badge. Maybe you could push these badges after people's names. Um, there are different ways we can gamify this. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that in the forums, we have so much knowledge already that um, it's almost like we could just link other forum posts for 90% of the problems. So people don't even know how easy it is to contribute there. Um, yeah, I don't know how to do that better. <laughs> Besides the, the, the tools that we have right now. Okay. In, in general, I do support the idea because helping people who have problems for that, the more the forums is so important and encourage more people to do that actively would be great. Uh, not sure whether this recognition would encourage anyone, but at least it, it would uh, motivate those who do the work uh, and tell them, yes, we know, we know this, we, we love that. Um, one of the topics that's come up a little bit as, as you guys have been talking about this recognition is really hitting on what are the motivators for someone to contribute. And I'd imagine that that's a little different from person to person. Can you talk a little bit about what you see as the, the driving motivators? Why do people contribute? What do they get out of it? Okay, I will start, I will say my opinion. Uh, there, there's a difference between coders and non-coders, I think. I, we can really separate that clearly. And uh, for coders, most of the contribution is, in my opinion, because they see a problem what they want to solve for themselves, so why not contribute it back? But it's rarely like that, that, okay, I'm a coder, I'm so bored because I don't have you know, ADHD and then 100 other pl projects lying around. And, you know, I want to work on this Maltic thing. And let's see what's new on the GitHub issues. You know, let's fix something. I, I can't imagine that scenario. Uh, but for, for, for a marketer, it's like they go in there, they see the knowledge base, and maybe they see, okay, I could do this better. So they could modify the text there, modify, make new screenshots, or or do some other uh, upgrades to the current tutorials. Uh, so it's, in my opinion, it's it's very different what motivates people. I think also in the um, in the forums, very often what motivates people, they come there, they want to post a problem, they read the text, and oh, yeah, actually I know the answer, so let's answer this, and then I post my problem. It just I think for the forums also, it just feels good that you help people, and someone else will keep using Mautic because you told them what to do. So you actually grow the, the the user base, which means more contributors, which means a better product. I was gonna... uh, uh, oh. Sorry. Really quick, audience members, feel free to chime in here. We want to know what motivates you to contribute. So throw something in the chat and in the Q&A. What gets you excited to contribute back to the, the Modic project? And with that, we'll go back over to, to Deborah here, who is about to add something. 
No, I was, uh, I'm on the non-dev uh, side of things, as Joey put it. Uh, I think uh, the, the get help is also a, a, a motivator because like when you do get the help, uh, you feel like, oh, I'm going to be here because maybe I will need help again. And so like, like he said, so all of a sudden you see a question and then you're like, you are not there because you wanted to answer a question. You were just there in case you wanted to ask one. But since you are there and you, you can answer that one, you know, and then you go and every now and again, something will pop up and you're going to, oh, so that's a nice idea. You know, so I think that the creativity of how we use, at least for me, that's like a, a, a big plus. Uh, this is my first time contributing to anything. Um, and that's one one thing that attracts me a lot. It's like people are getting new ideas and they, they actually can implement them because there's no like huge chain of command before you can even think something new. So I think that's one thing that motivates people is, is the community itself, like being a part of the community once you start contributing, but also seeing what other people are thinking and doing and, you know, getting like, sort of like, a, a, I'm going to be very, uh, what's the word, uh, selfish in the sense, but like getting a leg up, people are like Googling marketing stuff and I am here within a community of marketers, a community of people who work with that and who will come up with something or might come up with something that that's it's not going to be just out there you know like a thousand search results in whatever search time you, you you use so i think that's that's also something that you want to be in the loop but with a special kind of people especially in this sense like they're not just any marketers you know they are marketers who are part of a community and a community who thinks outside of the box and who thinks collectively towards what Motic can be and you know where we want it what we want it to be You're mute. I'm just going to throw things up on the screen and 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 sit here quietly. Um, Iris in the chat here wrote, for me, the good thing about contributing is the feeling of being able to do something. With non-open source project, you have limited options to solve problems. Here, if something bothers, bothers you, you can fix it yourself, which seems to echo what Joey was saying just a moment ago. It's the scratch your own itch contribution. Um, Robin writes, when I'm helped, it motivates me to strongly return the favor by helping someone else. That pay it forward ment mentality as well. Keep stuff coming in the chat, please, please. Yeah. Um, I, I, sorry, okay. Steve. I, no, I please. A lot of things that we see here gets back to what Joey says much earlier. This is sort of networking uh power that, that is given to you when, once you get become more active then automatically you have people that you can turn to etc and, and that just helps you uh, do a better job and in general um this has this has not come up but i see that over and over again that once you get active in contributing that takes you to a whole new level in understanding because when you have to explain things to people um, then you have to really understand those. If when you change a feature, you really have to understand it, et cetera. So rather than just consuming and no 10% contribu contributing and, and uh, uh, will up you way beyond 50%. Excellent. Um, do we have time for one more topic here? Around the room. Excellent. Um, one of the, the the questions that we had we had talked about in the uh, in our prep here was, what's the difference between a company contrib contribution experience and an individual contribution experience, and and especially where those two things intersect, and what can we do to improve that experience? Where if your employer is asking you to contribute, versus uh, if you're trying to find your own time to do it, is there any distinction there, and anything we need to recognize? Wow. Um, can I say something? Because it's a big topic for me. You are the employer and the contributor in one. So <laughs> yeah. that's what you're going to say. <laughs> yeah. And I've been um, with a company who is actively 
embracing open source or has been actively embracing open source for many, many years. And what we've learned is that you cannot just tell people to, to contribute or to, to love open source, right? <laughs> um, you can change procedures and say, no, no, we are going to publish every single bug fix that we do. Or yes, we are You're going to use GitHub and not this or that or, or whatever, or use the same branching strategy. Um, yeah, that you can do, but you cannot tell people to go join a team or go uh, test a PR. Yeah, you can do that. We do that during onboarding. So just to get, get going, yeah, do, do a couple of PR tests. And then either they love it or they at least feel some value in it and, and keep doing that, or they don't, but you cannot just dictate that. So what we do is create a culture and environment and encouragement um, that finds the, the right people and brings them to active contribution. But then we are back to individual contribution. In, in, there is con con a company contribution as in give money or things like that, or decide to publish a plugin. But, but uh, when it comes to the employees, you can just set the boundaries. So is it, is it safe to say then, if the community provides a stellar experience to those employees contributing, it makes the employer's job that much easier and, and makes that employer's choice that much easier to have their employees contributing on, on, on company time. Is that a safe, well, safe, safe assumption, safe, safe way to take that, take that comment? Well, one question is, as a company, do I want to do that? Um, and uh, there is this, so there's other motivations than the individual motivations, which we just discussed. Uh, but they are certainly there. And the, the, the better it all works, the stronger the motivation is, of course. Um, send or, or encouraging your, your employees to become individual contributors, you don't want that to end into in, in frustration as well, of course. That's going to be counterproductive. Um, so, yeah, it's certainly a true statement, what you just said. And I think it's on us to make sure that as a community that we have clear examples of how people can contribute because your developer might not love creating PRs and testing PRs. They might really want to get involved with organizing events or writing really technical geeky articles about how to do things in Mautic with creating a plugin. So having those different ways that they could contribute means there's a lot more ways for your company to get involved as well. It's not just, you know, PR testing, for example. Mm -hmm. Okay. I also in, think, uh, go ahead, Aki. No, no, you go ahead. Just in one sentence that companies sometimes think like this, what can, I, what can I get out of it? What's my benefit as a company from my employees contributing? And I can just say again, the network effect, you will not see the cash right away, but the network effect is worth everything when you know how to fix your multi really, really fast because you know everyone around. That should be the motivation for the companies to be part of it, integrate that you have the fast track to all solutions, really. Yeah, we, we had a great uh, discussion about that at the last sprint. And I think, Deborah, you were involved and maybe Ivana. Um, and that was about basically turning the thing around to say, if there is an individual who would like to do more in terms of contribution, we need to support them to con convince their employee, like, like give them all the good reasons why an employer should embrace contribution. So that's the best chance if the individual is already motivated or he or she only needs the okay from the employer, then help them get that okay. So that is probably not too hard just to matter of visibility to, to, to give give that information or to make that information findable. Uh, yeah, I was I was going to say exactly that, that I think it depends on um, when Joey says, like, what do I get out of it? I suppose convincing this employer depends on what do they expect to get out of it? 
So it may be just branding, like having my logo somewhere or having my name uh, mentioned in some sort of space or event. But it can also be, um, um, how do you say that in English, uh, uh, untangible things, mm -hmm. things that are not tangible. You know, so um, when 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 you position yourself as a company who is at the forefront of the innovation or of the new technologies and all that, and I think one thing that might work for all companies is that being in the loop helps you plan ahead. You know, so okay, you are allowing it because it costs money. I think at the end of the day, and I'm again gonna go super corporate here. Uh, but it costs money, like any hour that I'm not working on, whatever my company does, is an hour that my company is paying to not work, and quote unquote here. Um, but the idea is that this money is going to come, money again, quote unquote, but it's going to come from some other uh, place. So you're going to, 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 one of the things that I think is going to be a huge benefit uh, for uh, all sorts of companies that work with Mautic is that, you can plan ahead, you can know what's coming, how you can adapt to that, how you can be a pivot of innovation within that framework, within those, those news that are coming, and uh, how you can maybe uh, be ready for when it comes and then actually with money profit from whatever feature or novelty uh, that is that is coming. And I, I think uh, the, as it is hard to, to talk to money folks about like, okay, there is money coming that way, you know, I think that might be uh, maybe the most, not the most, okay, but like one of uh, one highly effective way of convincing companies to to invest uh, their employees' time uh, in 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 a project like Mautic. If I made any sense, I don't know if I got too carried away. You absolutely made sense, and you did not get too carried away, Deborah. Thank you. Um, we have just a, a minute left, or a couple minutes left here. I'm going to go around the room really quick. Uh, you, you literally, a panelist, you have like like 45 seconds to talk here each. So um, what's one thing that we're doing really well? And if there was one area that you wanted to see us focus on, what is that? We'll start, um, we'll start with Joey. Okay, I think we, what we're doing really well is that I think we are super nice people and I'm talking about others, not me, because that doesn't give me the right to, to talk about myself. But I think I've never seen such a welcoming crowd and what we could do better probably it's the it's the mentorship something what we have to look into not everybody likes to read documents but once people see that we actually give the tools to people then they will start contributing and yeah we will reward them for sure all right Aki. Ooh, i was i was hoping for more time all right, <laughs> okay i i think um we have really enthusiastic people in the team and uh, some are really working like crazy to get to move things forward and I, I could fully suggest what Joey said but I need to find something else <laughs> uh, <laughs> so um, that's sometime sometimes that uh, that effort is burnt though because we're not working you know, on the structures. I mean, we try really try our best to, to do that, but but there's a still a lack of uh, system, lack of structure. We were um, fighting the wrong fights sometimes, etc. And um, nothing nothing wrong with all the individual effort, but sometimes I, I feel we should uh, look in the mirror and and uh, take a step back and and say, okay, what is of the most value of the most importance at this point. And probably it's, it's, it's many things. We, we need to push the product forward at the same time. We need to think of the future. We need, of, of, uh, need to onboard more people, et cetera. But um, um, in general, I'm, I'm really happy with, with how we're doing. Um, if only we had more time, more money. <laughs> more, more time, more money. Ruth. Um, so I think given we only created the teams two and a half years ago, I think we've done pretty good to get to where we are. And I think the thing that we are doing really well is um, creating a culture of helping each other, helping people. 
uh, something I think we need to do more or do better is probably uh, following through and following up and making sure that once someone makes their first or second contribution that we're on hand to say, hey, here's the next one and keep people moving through. Deborah, any, any last words? Uh, we started with you, we'll end with you. No, Ruth just stole my answer. But yeah, I think the greatest thing is the community that is being built. And I think we can we can be better at recognizing it because that's super cool when you're recognized for what you did. Excellent. Well, I want to thank our panelists. Thank you for the time and the insights and all of the value you've added today. Thank you very much for those that did contribute in chat and Q&A. Your uh, questions and comments were wonderful and insightful. And if they didn't make it up on the stage, I apologize. We had a lot of value to pack in here. And if you have any other ideas to contribute, um, please do get in touch, post that stuff in Slack, reach out to Ruth directly, however you, uh, however you want, to, uh, want to improve the experience for all the contributors across the board. Those ideas are always welcome. Thank you. And uh, we'll leave you to your next session. Thank you for hosting, thanks. Steve. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.